Hey everybody, it's Mitch, and welcome to my next video. Today we are going to be talking about um, druids, and we're going to be talking specifically about their animal companions. So let's dive into this. So there's a lot to talk about with druids' animal companions. I'd say there's three types of animal companions that you can go with. You can go with your attacking type. You can go with your mount type and you can go with your scout type. Now, uh, this really, uh, which one you should go with really, really varies depending on a lot of different things. Um, if you're going full on into Druid, uh, you're probably gonna want either attack or mount maybe. Um, whereas if you're gonna be taking uh, some prestige classes, um, you might not wanna do the attack option. Um, largely because um, uh, prestige classes, most of them will not uh, advance your animal companion. So some will, but uh, a lot won't. And if you're taking prestige classes that aren't advancing your animal companion, the attack ones aren't great because all those levels where you're not advancing the animal companion really put that animal companion behind. And once you start getting into higher levels, they're just going to be in the way. They're not going to be much help. I mean, they might be able to provide a flanking bonus to a rogue type um, who needs sneak attack. But beyond that, they're, they're just there taking up space that other characters could be in and really not doing much. It's kind of a problem. Um, Rangers, I don't think should. I really don't recommend Rangers ever choose the attack option, for the simple fact that they're never going to be up to that level. Druids, only if you're going uh, full out druid, and only uh, no prestige classes, or if you do take prestige classes, only ones that advance animal companion, because the attack one's not great. Um, now, if you are going to do an attack type. Now, uh, what you'd want to do is, uh, th there's a few different options on that. And we'll get into that in a second. Uh, let's go over the other two types. So you have your mount type. Those ones, um, those ones are all right if you're taking, um, uh, if, you're, if you're actually a druid, those ones aren't going to be bad. Um, you can, as long as you have a decent number of uh, levels, it's, it, it will be fine. You need to make sure that your mount type is getting enough levels that uh, its health and everything is high enough that it can tank a couple of hits. Because um, you, you don't want your mount dying on you right away. You want to make sure it stays alive. But as long as it can tank a few hits and won't go down super quick, um, it's not a big deal. You should be okay with, uh, uh, with a mount type one. It's, they, they don't need to be super strong. It doesn't really matter if they have a decent attack bonus or anything like that. As long as their health is decent and they can survive a few hits, you're good. Um, another nice advantage of mounts is uh, with share spell, you're able to, your mount is guaranteed to be within range, so that's handy. Um, whereas with the other types, um, there's a real good chance they won't be in range. Um, the scout type probably won't be. Um, uh, the attack type will generally only be within range uh, at the start of combat, and then like they'll go flying off later. Um, they'll go running up, and you'll stay put typically. So that's that's a thing. Uh, whereas the mount, like it's your mount, so it's going to be with you at all times, and will almost always be able to benefit from share spells. So that's a nice advantage. Um, yeah. Um, also, you know, as a druid, you tend to have some cure spells, so you'll be able to, you know, if your mount takes some damage, you'll be able to fix him up pretty quick, um, since he's in range. It's touch, but you're riding him. You're touching. <laughs> like, no problems there. Um, then, of course, the third type is the scout type. That type doesn't really need to be that strong. That one can you can afford to have uh, fairly weak. Uh, basically, you're going to want to put some spells where you can like see through his eyes or something. Um, 
because druids uh, themselves don't really get anything like that with their animal companion. But, you know, uh, it's not too hard to put some spells on there. You can get you can get those fairly cheap and um, easily get them on there so that you can uh, use, your, uh, use your animal companion as a scout. And with those, they can be really low level. Like, they don't need much. Um, just enough skill point, and uh, just enough so that their skill points are able to, you know, per, uh, uh, perceive things and be able to hide well. There is not super, super important um, to be strong. Um, yeah, so let's start diving into these types one by one. So the attack types, there's a few different options for that. Um, if you really want to focus on your uh, doing a lot of damage, um, trying to go with like a big cat or something's pretty good. Um, if you're more interested in doing like uh, maybe a little grappling, um, something like a bear can be really good. Um, you won't get them to a later level, um, cat, big cats as well. Um, if you're looking for something at early levels, a riding dog and a wolf, those are going to be your big options uh, for that. Um, you're also looking at, um, uh, yeah, uh, you could always go with a boar, although boars, not that great offensively, more defensively, and defense isn't super important, so not the best of choices. Um, yeah, uh, I'd recommend, you know, a bear or, or maybe like um, uh, a leopard or something. Uh, you know, good choices right there. Um, then of course for your mounts, uh, flying ones are pretty good. Trying to get a dire bat is, uh, a pretty nice choice. The fly speed's always good. Um, there are some problems with flying, you know, with maneuverability and all that good stuff, but the dire bat has a uh, pretty good maneuverability, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Um, if you're looking more for speed, you know, you can always go with a, a light or a heavy horse, always decent options. Um, there's ways to give them flight as well. Um, so there's that. Uh, you know, those are, those are your kind of few options there for mouths. I, I'd say um, those are kind of the big ones. If you're doing an aquatic one, I'm pretty sure there's a few aquatic mouths. I don't know them off the top of my head, but I haven't played a lot of aquatic uh, campaigns. I don't know many DMs that run those, so it's not a huge thing that comes up. But there are aquatic mounts if you're in one of those campaigns. Um, yeah, and as I said, they don't; those don't have to be as strong, so not a big deal. And then, of course, for your scouts, you have your eagle, your hawk. Um, there's a few different, uh, as you know, something that you know can be up in the sky and be able to see things. Uh, which one's better really depends on time of day. Um, that's that, that's that's really the difference there. Uh, then you also have other options, you can always go with things like a snake. Um, they're, they're pretty decent for uh, scouts. You know, small little things, things that no one's going to notice, uh, you can always do as your scout. And, yeah. Um, now, uh, in terms of uh, prestige classes that might help, um, I know the Beastmaster prestige class is actually really, really good for animal companions. Uh, basically it will, uh, basically it just, it effectively stacks with your, uh, druid and, uh, your druid and ranger levels, but it also adds three on top of that. So that's really good. It just makes your effective druid level, you know, it, it's stack plus three, which is nice. Uh, also, uh, as you gain more levels, you'll gain a second and a third and, I can't remember if you get a fourth or not, but you gain like a ton of animal companions by the end. Um, you know, at which point you'll want to, you know, maybe do like maybe an attacker or two, a mount, maybe a scout. You know, you you want to you want uh, you definitely want your strongest one, the strongest ones to be the attackers. You want the uh, the mount to be next, and then your weakest one, if you're gonna do a scout, should be the scout. Like, definitely go in that order. Um, but yeah, uh, that one's a pretty solid one. There's definitely other options. Um, I know, uh, if you take some levels of Paladin, you can 
you know, make your uh, uh, you can make your animal companion and your special mount kind of the same deal uh, with one feet. Not bad. Um, that's uh, in Complete Adventure. Uh, I know if you're going to be uh, thurging with uh, an arcane class, you can make your familiar and your uh, animal companion the same by taking levels of uh, arcane hierophant, which is an amazing class. Uh, and yeah, it's like you have to take the levels to make that work, but you want to take the levels. It's a great class if you're going to be uh, mixing druid with um, thurge. Uh, the downside is, you know, all your levels in the arcane class won't go towards your animal companion, but, you know, that's, it, it is what it is. So, yeah, um, I guess you could uh, take Beastmaster to make up for it. That, that, that'd work. Um, also, I, yeah, even just one level Beastmaster would make up for the three levels of that. So, yeah, that's not a bad option, actually. Um and that would uh, also get you um, a lot of things like being able to see through their eyes and stuff, which are things that, well, actually probably not with only three levels. Um, but those are things that uh, uh, familiars get that uh, animal companions don't. So that's kind of nice. Could, if you really, really wanted to, I suppose you could even go... Uh, um, uh, yeah, you probably could make your familiar animal companion and special mount all the same by taking them uh, by taking that feat and the class and then just having like one creature that's like all three um, that probably works but that's a lot of resources and I I don't uh, it, it's hard to say whether it explicitly works or not because I know they both mix with uh, the animal companion Normally, you can't mix them together with each other, but um, maybe. Um, well, there might be a feat that lets you mix them with each other, then you'd have to take that. Yeah, it, it gets complicated. I don't want to get into that too much. Um, but, um, yeah, Animal Companions. There's there's a lot to them. Um, they're pretty dang good. Uh, druids, you know, that, that's one of their better features. You know, you got that... Uh, one of the nice things is it only takes one day to get a new one. So if they die, it's not the end of the world. You know, um, from a lore perspective, you know, it kind of is. Like, that's your pet, basically. Like, you're going to mourn the thing. Uh, but it takes, like, a day to get a new one. Like, it's not like a sorcerer who loses uh, – a sorcerer or wizard, when they lose their um, – familiar they lose like that's like a part of themselves and they lose all sorts of experience no you don't lose anything you just have to spend a day getting a new one no resource costs basically you just walk out into the woods and be like oh yeah there's a new one it takes you a day doing it like that's it it's not anything too crazy to to get one um yeah uh that's really all i have to say about uh uh, these uh, animal companions. I hope you guys learned something. If there's anything you guys uh, wanted to say, if you had more information or if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Always love hearing from you guys. Also, uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. Uh, that definitely helps me out. Um, and, you know, if you haven't already done so, you know, maybe subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell, uh, you know, to uh, get those notifications for uh, when I come out with more videos. And, uh, you know, maybe share this uh, if you know someone who's playing a druid uh, or even a ranger and wants some advice on uh, animal companions. But anyways, as always, I'm Mitch, and I'll be seeing you.